Because again, when higher self wants you to level up, it is going to fast the very thing that you believe you need to stay safe. Whether it is money or health or whatever it is, higher self is going to take it away from you because it is the only way you're going to go into the shadow and truly face yourself. Because what you're going to realize is that we can't get off this island if we're not a team. It's the story I've told a million times. The idea of best friends or husband, married, and wife, they're on an island and one of them gets hurt and the other one says, I'm going to go for help. And, and it takes them years to get off the island. And by the time they get off the island, they don't have any idea of how they're going to get back on. So they're going through their life with all the shame and guilt, knowing that they probably can't get back, probably knowing that the other part of them is dead. And the part of them that's dead on the island waits patiently until it turns into hate. And they figure out a way to survive and they eat what they can and they become utterly disgusting and they become distorted. And the literally existence, what gets them up every day is how much they hate you. And the you who got off the island is now trying to figure out how to live your life because you have no resource to get home to that self. You don't even know if that person's dead and you really can't face that. So you begin to try to have a life outside of the separation and then the whole world haunts you because you will always be connected to you. So again, what you will see is you will see disgustingness in your perfect new world. You will feel lack in your money. You will feel tortured in your relationships because fundamentally this part of you that remains millions of miles away energetically is still 100% connected to you no matter what you do. And so every single one of us that is on this journey, we can get to a certain point of success. We can get to a certain point of love. We can get to a certain point of greatness. And then we cannot get any further unless we go and pick them up. And imagine this. Like I thought about actually writing a movie script about this because it could be so cool. Imagine this. You finally do go, okay, I can't, I can't have a happy life in this world if I don't settle up here, at least find out if they're dead and give them a proper burial. Like I have to go. And this is where everyone is right now. And so you get back on the island and then that's when the real war starts because it isn't like, hi, 40 years, you know, a nice dress, you know, you got cute, cute tattoos, right? Got a couple kids. And like you come back, thinking that it's going to be a reunion if they're alive. And if they're dead, you're going to bury them and get over it. Oh, but oh no, this is when the war begins. Because now when your unconscious becomes aware that you exist, it's game on. This is when the war starts. You're alive and you never came and got me? You said you were coming back. I literally separated, fractured myself for you so you could survive your family, so you could survive school. You said you were coming back. And so now all the guilt and shame that's coming up in this version and all the rage and wrath that's coming up in this version. See, you don't know that all you're experiencing is this. What you think is that you are experiencing a marriage and a job and a money situation and health issues because this illusion does not happen based on this story. It happens through everyone else, through your system, through your government, through your world, through your family, through your money, through your time. And so you're not just battling the boss of a broken version of yourself that's all mangled up eating bugs on an island. Oh no, you're, you're now dealing with the whole world on some level. Now, all the great things that you have done that you put into the pot of the world, you do have those resources. You know, you will somehow be fed during this process. You will somehow have someone in your corner. You will have a flashlight in the dark somehow. Even if it's a random stranger on Facebook, you will always have a flashlight in the dark. But you're not getting off this island unless you get off together. So the part of you that is still in the unconditional love is the responsibility to amend this relationship. Which means the only way that you are going to not be totally disgusted by the version of yourself you find 
and repelled and want to run away is if you try to understand it, which is our class last week. Let me understand and walk in her shoes, his shoes, the last 40 years. What have they had to do to survive? I might have had to manipulate and learn skills and be out in the world and deal with things I didn't want to deal with. But this version of me has literally been in the dark alone, having to survive in the most excruciating ways that is now literally possessed with all the dark spirits because it's been left in that dead vibration, lost, abandoned, rejected vibration. Every serial killer pedophile on the planet is a walk. If they're a zombie, they're a walking dead version. And they're so abandoned of themselves that literally they are surviving however they can in the manipulation of their own trauma. So a pedophile becomes the trauma. All right. A therapist is a byproduct of a pedophile. Okay. So who's better? If we're going to look at right and wrong here, if we're going to be in judgment here, who's better, the martyr or the perpetrator? Who's better, the snake or the mouse? So if we're going to look at this neutrally, the only way that you're ever going to let that part of yourself integrate back in is to fully understand with compassion, consideration, and understanding that that part is you. And then when you consistently show up and you do not, you know, watch yourself get punched and chase whoever punched you, because again, this is kind of how it works. Let's say you get back on this island and you guys meet and there's just a full-blown war. And so you have to separate for a while, all right? Because you're trying to figure out how to work together. They're trying to kill you and you're trying to get help them get off the island so they can have a better life. They don't know that there's a better life. They don't know there's anything off the island. They don't know there's a God. They don't know you are God. And so they want to kill you on the island and make you suffer the way they suffered. That's their MO. So there's a part of you that literally wants to kill you the part of you that you killed a wife. Okay. And it literally, it's just how predator prey works. That's it's all kind of neutral in this story, but the part of you that has done the work, the part of you that's empathic, the part of you that's sensitive, the part of you that's a healer, a mother, a teacher, a guide, whatever you want to call yourself, the part of you that you like. Okay. It is your responsibility to understand this. This is why a spiritual community that remains in judgment is doomed. <laughs> the race is doomed if spiritual people stay in this conflict. If they stay in judgment, right? If they say that that demon over there is not them. If they can see the demon, it's them. All right? So when you start to get to this place of the only way off of this island is to love all of me, the alchemy. OK, because then together, this dark, hideous beast of you has skills you couldn't begin to have. Right. Think about it. If you were stuck on an island and you had been grocery shopping and you had had a job and you had money, you come to an island where there's no money. There's no grocery stores. There's no resources that you're accustomed to. There's no one to manipulate and get your way. There's no one to take care of you. You're now on the unconscious turf, aren't you? You're on unconsciousness's turf. She or he knows how to live on this island, eat what it needs to eat, do what it needs to do. And now you are going to need your unconscious's help. This is the paradox. Look at this game God designed. Okay, look at this. It's like in order for me to get off this island, or aka you get out of your situation that you are stuck in, money block, whatever it is, that's making you feel like you don't know how to live life, okay? There's got to be a part of you right now that is terrified that you don't know how to do this. You don't, you don't know how to go to the next level. You don't know how to make money and be vulnerable and not be part of a system. You don't know how to feed yourself in, in a way where, you know, if money wasn't there, what would you do? So again, you've got to get to know the part of you that knows how to survive, and you've got to do it. You, you've got to create an amends product and they will not help you because the hate is so great 
that literally the only way that you are going to change hate back into love is by consistently, consistently understanding. Not taking things personally, people. All right? Looking at it as this is a mirror of my greatness or my lost aspect. That's it. And then there's lots of mirrors in between. But the ones that you're going to be working with this is the story of the superhuman. This is the whole point of this year's class because you are at the two points. So, so you are the superman and you are the villain and you equal have the talents and the strengths could destroy each other, right? Because think about it. If you were just like, well, I'm gonna go manifest my way off this island, okay? You could probably do that. And then that energy would haunt you for the rest of your life and you'd probably get killed by a serial killer in your beautiful townhouse. Because this is never going away. This is karma. This is cause and effect. And all of us are responsible for the parts of ourselves we abandon. That's actually what our karma is. So when I researched, you guys know I was on that tangent for a while and I was researching like all of the astrology, mostly my own, because I was like, I want to see what kind of crazy I have. Boy, did I find it. My first house is Jesus. My 12th house is Judas. So imagine... Judas is on the island, okay, and Jesus is in the, in the townhouse doing miracles on people, right? Or Satan, you could even say, because the Judas energy is kind of like the Scorpio energy and the Pisces energy. So it's like, so again, me in meditation, it kept saying, you just need to face yourself. You need to turn in the same direction. Like every time I would meditate, turn in the same direction of what? And I didn't realize is that I was facing that way and my dark was facing that way and I was getting further and further away and I felt like time was running out because the money did dry up. The resources did dry up. My clients did dry up. I was literally like, I got to figure out how to live with nothing. So guess who I needed? I needed the part of me that's been living there the whole time that never grew up with me, that never had kids, that never had the relationship, that hasn't got to know God over this last year because it's only a way to exist is to live in a state of survival 24 seven, kill or be killed. So now I come back and I resurrect all this pain in my unconscious mind. Now to add a twist in here, I'm giving you a scenario, but imagine that this, this unconscious part of you is also all your generational trauma. So it's not just, it's all of it. It's, it's every act against woman. It's every act against the man. It's like, it's all the suffering because the unconscious is the unconscious of all humanity. And the super consciousness is the super consciousness of all humanity. And so it's not just one personal vendetta. It is literally, it could be an inveta, a a gender or against money or against a color of a person, right? Because again, if you go back 12 generations, we were pretty petty back then about skin color and all kinds of things, you know, burned on the stake for having intuition. So that part of you that you were like, okay, I'm going to get all the way into my enlightenment. I'm going to become the light. And then I'm going to go into the dark, you see, and you do this. And this was part of the game because God is love. And so when you return to the idea of I am love, well, now it's time for you to go love the parts of you that hate you. And this is the Satan Jesus game. This is the Christ and Antichrist. All right. Now, what happens is when we don't take personal responsibility for our game board, we project it into a collective and then we get collective agreement on it. And that collective agreement creates entities and things like that. Now it's an actual expression. Now, someone who has hate in their heart can have a demonic attack from even a bigger entity because it's a collective it's a collective magnetism this is why it is like attracts like so this is probably why right now you are having such a contradiction of your reality you've never loved yourself more and yet you don't know how to do life you don't know how to do life without plugging in and giving your soul away to the system but there's a part of you that just can't do that anymore and so you are on the island. You are in the face off era. This is why uh, we can call it the villain era or whatever, but this is actually where you meet your villain. And without truly understanding 
and taking the time to put yourself in their shoes. Because again, if you guys went through my quantum torture program, I know Donna did. And I remember taking her into the ice bath, right? And, and feeling literally like you were going to die. I said, this is how your inner child felt when you abandoned her. Right here. But you never felt that because you just jumped out of your body. You never felt the grief because you had to survive the more. You had to do what your mom wanted you to do in that moment. You didn't get, you didn't feel, but that child is staying in a perpetual ice bath. This is why we call it cold hearted. Because again, it is this deep level of cold heartedness that happens when you are so abandoned and rejected. Now.